everybody, it's Glenn and the legendary comic book Heroes Pit series action figure reviews roll on with Judge Dredd. Here is the bio from the packaging back. Pause now to read at your own leisure. Needless to say, he is straight out of the pages of 2000 AD and perhaps one of the most popular characters in all of UK comics. I mean, he's right up there with the likes of Desperate Dan and the Bash Street Kids. Other figures in the series are Rip Claw, who I've already reviewed. If you missed that, I'll hook you up with a link at the end of this video. Super Patriot, Madman, Savage Dragon, Witchblade, other than Dread, they're all a bit who? And of course, the Pit Builder figure. Speaking of which, Dread comes with the right leg of Pit, which along with the right arm that came with Ripclaw, takes me one step closer to building Pit. Here is Dread out of packaging, some nice gritty paint application, really appropriate to the character, as with them you can really imagine him traipsing through the slums of a bleak, dirty future. The unfortunate downside to that paint app is some green paint splashed on his tunic. Beyond that, the big prominent shoulder insignia look great, and along with the elbow pads and boots, they really fill out the figure, lending Dread a menacing look of intimidation. And the iconic helmet is rendered really nicely. It isn't removable, but then Dread is hardly ever seen without it, unless that is your Sylvester Stallone playing him and arrogantly demanding your contract more screen time not wearing the helmet than wearing it. If you angle the figure back though, you can see the figure has received a full face sculpt beyond the chiseled chin. For accessories, Dread comes with a knife that fits into his boot and also his left hand is sculpted to hold it. He also comes with two guns. His right hand is sculpted into a finger on the trigger pose, which looks cool, but the downside to the way his hands are sculpted is you can't have him hold both guns at the same time, which would have been awesome. His guns can be squirreled away, one on his right boot and the second on the back of his belt. Now looking at our articulation, the head rotates side to side, yet alas, does not articulate up or down. The shoulders rotate and move up and down, kind of, well, at least as much as these shoulder parts allow anyway. The arm rotates around the shoulder joint and has a double jointed elbow, although the arm doesn't quite reach full extension at the elbow due to the elbow pad. There is rotation at the top of the glove and a wrist hinge, yet this hinge only really articulates in and not out because of the sculpt on the glove. It has an ab crunch, which articulates this far forwards and this far back. The figure has waist articulation and at the hips the legs move this far out and back in to the front and they move this far back. The legs rotate around the hip joint. There's a double jointed knee rotation at the top of the boot. The ankle is hinged so the foot moves backwards and forwards. There's an ankle pivot and then toe articulation as well. Although this figure predates the most recent Dread movie by a number of years, my love for that movie has made me love this figure that bit more. It's hard to believe we're not getting a sequel to that movie, yet we're having to suffer a fourth Transformers movie this year. Anyway, if you missed my Rip Claw review, click this video right now. Alternatively, check out the description beneath this video for links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Click those links and connect with me there too. And if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up and also remember to comment, share, and subscribe. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye.